Developing tonight, a disturbing hit and run caught on camera involving a family. It happened in the Capitol Hill neighborhood last week. Still, no arrest. Fox 5, Stephanie <laughs> Ramirez is live in Northeast after speaking with the family. Stephanie. Kenneth, this is a look at the intersection here. You can see there are bollards here. This intersection updated so that it's safer for people to cross here at C and 12th Streets Northeast. The mother telling us she was right in this area and saw the suspected driver on the other side here. She believes that that driver saw the woman and her family, her 10-year-old daughter, her 6-year-old son, and their dog. So they start crossing. Now, the moment when that vehicle hits this family, we have to warn you, the video of that, video of that, some may find disturbing. Take a look at the video here caught on a nearby camera. This was Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday, October 4th. It shows the Nissan Armada plowing into the family. Perhaps a saving grace here is that the SUV was mm. moving at a slower rate of speed. Look at him. He's looking, he ducked his head out the window. To see Hold on, where is this? This looks like my neck of the woods, man. That it's safer for people to cross here at C and 12th Streets Northeast. The mother telling Yeah, this is this is C and 12th. Yeah, this is this is this is around my neck of the woods. Yeah, when I'm you know where I'm, where, you know I stop the grass, but it's not not my area. But it's like blocks, a couple blocks away from me. But yeah, is this it a is common bad. thing over there? Is it a common thing people getting run over? You know what? I don't know what's common over there now, man, because. It's been so many years since I've been around there, but it's it's DC has changed so much, man. I'm talking about like literally, like it's like the 90s all over again. But I was a kid in the 80s and the 90s, so like you know, I was going to school and shit, and going to the you know programs after school and shit, and you know hanging with my friends and stuff like that and you know seeing it from a child's aspect but now seeing it from an adult's aspect it's like the city's so ugly man it's so grimy and it's way grimier than it was in the 2000s when i was an adult a young adult it's way grimier than it was in the 2000s and in the teens man way way grimier way um you know, like callousness and the um, evilness of the of the, of the street dudes is, is 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 different than it than it was. Video here caught on a nearby camera. This was Wednesday, uh, last Wednesday, October fourth. It shows the Nissan Armada plowing into the family. Perhaps a saving grace here is that the SUV was moving at a slower rate of speed. But this was all still very serious. One of the tires apparently pinning the six-year-old boy's leg. Now, one foot, we're told, was broken. Mom, daughter, the dog were also injured. Again, last Wednesday, October 4th, is when this happened. Good Samaritans ran to help the family, and they're yelling at that driver to back up and pull over. And at first, it looks like the driver is moving to pull over, but then he takes off. The mom, who asked she and her family not be named because that suspect is still out there. Damn, look how quick the that, cop got there. And the guy still got away. Damn, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> at that driver to back up and pull over. And at first, it looks like the driver is moving to pull over, but then he takes off. The mom, who asked she and her family not be named because that suspect is still out there, says that she's questioning what she could have done differently. Not having somebody hit you and your children and your dog and then take off is a very unsettling feeling. So I'm not exactly sure what possesses somebody to just flee the scene. See, here's the thing with her. She has to be very careful because in D.C., I, I've done several videos on this, man. The wokeness level is just, it's, it's, you can't calculate it, man. Like, I mean, like, literally, you can't calculate it, man. It's so off the charts, man. She cannot really say anything about that guy not because of black people but because the her friend group that she goes to brunch with you know goes to hundred dollar brunches with on sunday morning and goes to mass with and her friend group that she goes out for drinks with that you know upscale bars you know and stuff like that they'll get on her ass way harder than black people will if she says anything 
that um that you know is just like not like you know this could be a blessing in disguise i mean you know our, uh, we did need to get our son checked up at the hospital you know what i'm saying like she better say if she says anything that's not woke she's in trouble that having somebody hit you and your children and your dog and then take off is a very unsettling feeling. So I'm not exactly sure what possesses somebody to just flee the scene. And guys, police rec recovered the SUV, but they're not saying where or when or who they are looking for. The family is hoping this person is caught and does serve some time behind bars, if so, but they don't know where this investigation is going to go. And bars. Very stuff there, Stephanie. Are there new laws that crack down on reckless driving here in D.C.? Kenneth, there was a bill introduced to do that. Uh, it did have a hearing just last week. We don't know how that would have impacted the scene that happened here, though, just yet. I will say, D.C. police, they do need some help. They're asking for the, that good Samaritan that's seen on camera running towards the fleeing SUV. They're asking for that person to please contact the first police district. Kenneth? Were, were the victims gliders? What do you mean? The victims of so, this? Of exactly. this? Yeah, the ones that got hit, were they gliders? Yeah, that's her. That's the mother. Yo, the gliders can't catch a break. Yeah, that's the mother right there. She's the one that got her son got hit. Mm. Yo. <laughs> don't, don't put that camera on me. <laughs> oh man. Hey, do do we did they do we know uh the offender? What was their like ethnicity? It looked like a brother that stuck his head out that window, man. I mean mm. it looked like a brother, but you know the story earlier we saw, so you can never um you know. Yo, yeah, and that did, at this time I was gonna give some people the benefit of the doubt earlier. I don't know. You never know. It could it could have been it could have been a Palestinian, you don't know. And first and six here on this Friday, a local woman held up at gunpoint in the middle of the day, and the whole thing was caught on camera, and now She's getting a lot of reaction about how she handled the whole situation. Yeah, Stephanie Ramirez is going one-on-one -on -one with that woman today. She is live in Northeast D.C. Uh, Steph, first of all, so frightening, but this guy had a gun pointed at her. Traumatizing, Sharin, is how I respond. Gil described this whole experience. Obviously, the video is getting different reactions. Now, to be clear, she is not encouraging people to do what she did. She said she was just following her gut reaction. Yeah. She does believe in following her gut. But this is what this longtime Northeast D.C. Uh, resident experienced just a few days ago. No, shoot me, shoot me. No, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. Yo, salute to this woman. She brave, man. You can clearly hear I respond, Gil say, shoot me as a suspect gets close to her. The violent encounter happened a little after 3.20 in the afternoon Tuesday. This was on 10th Street Northeast, not far from 8th Street. Bond Gil says she was rummaging through her bag when all of a sudden a young man came up and appeared to, in this video, point a gun at her from under a hoodie. Now, she recalls him saying, I'll shoot you and give me your keys, but says at the time it didn't register that he wanted the keys for the car that she had just gotten out of. She just knew she was in danger and reacted. This video is getting a lot of play online. I asked the victim today what she hopes people will take away from it. One response was that we need stronger communities. Gone are the days of having older uh, neighbors that sat on the porch all day and watched and waved you on when you got home from work. And I think in some ways, trying to think about how to preserve that intergenerational neighborhood is so valuable. We've lost so much of that in the city with massive displacement. Uh, and so I think, you know, just having more people around that know each other and that support each other would be uh, really helpful. 
The other thing she said she hopes people take away is situal, a situational awareness. Iris told me that one of the hardest things for her to watch was seeing herself on that video, not paying attention as she was rummaging through that bag. I can also tell you the family had no idea there was video of this and it was posted online until someone in the community flagged it to the family. So she's, she was, she, she's blaming displacement. And you know that that is the gentrification. The white people who came in and took the um, bought up the houses. Now the old black grandparents aren't sitting on their porch and looking out for everybody, as she says, or straight bullets. Right. A lot, a lot of good wisdom. Real good answer, as you would expect. <laughs> Just. <sighs> Give me a city, man. Give me a city, man. Um, mm. Any city, man. Oh. Shout out to um, P.A.N., man, becoming a member. P.A.N. in the building, man. We've got Orlando and Houston. <laughs> 